Check, 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 check. Is this thing on or what? How are we doing? Can you hear me? We're live, I think. So, we're in the studio. I don't know where to look. There. Uh, sorry I'm late. I meant to start about 7.30. And uh, what I was planning on doing today is running you through the project for Pressure 2019. Um, took me ages to I did this when I on my old studio Mac and there was a whole bunch of plugins I don't have anymore and things like that um, I haven't had time to like tidy it up or anything so we could be walking into an absolute clusterfuck of disorganization here but it looks all right I remember making it I was quite um, calm about everything and I mean there's still lots of tracks here and everything but um, I'd been naming everything okay um, Oh yeah, I was gonna say. <coughs> oh, oh, yeah, glad you like my shirt. Oh, did it change to a different screen share then? Hang on a minute, what's that? Was I on this one for a while? That's the one we want. That's the one we want. Um, yeah. So as you can see, uh, it's a pretty big uh, project. I'll play it through from the beginning. Uh, this is Pressure 2019. It came out this time last year actually and it's a remix of one of my first big kind of successful tunes um oh my god is that a bald patch no it's just the way the light goes it's just the way the light's going it's not a bald patch john uh i shouldn't have put the camera up there yeah so this is my new edition i've uh, got a gopro that i bought for my main streams and i just couldn't get it uh flipping working up there i was using an elgato cam link Yeah, this thing. These were like in such short supply in the early days of lockdown and it takes an HDMI input to USB and it basically turns any HDMI signal like out of a camera into a USB, like a webcam. Um, and the Elgato one is the, the, the daddy and they're expensive and everyone was buying them. Um, and they, they run really badly on a Mac anyway, but you they only run properly if you have a dedicated GPU. And I've been doing all my DJ streaming stuff from um, uh, the from upstairs. Casey, my friend Casey is in the chat. Alpha Quadrant, how you doing, mate? Hi, Star Glum. Good to see the old regular faces back in. Nice one. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, so I ordered a, a cheap, crappy Chinese sort of copy that there's loads of them about now on um, uh, Amazon for, for 10 quid yesterday. And that's what I'm using to connect the GoPro up. And it seems to be working. Uh, I think the GoPro might overheat at some point and just shut out, uh, in which case I'll just switch to my other view here. Anyway, I'll play through the track from the beginning and uh, maybe talk over it a little bit and then I'll break it down for you. Um, so here we go. I'll have to keep an eye on the relative microphone to song volume here. So this is a remix of a song I made about 20 years ago, basically. But I redid it all. I replayed everything from scratch. There were no samples from the original, apart from the vocal, which is me going... <laughs> Monitor speakers I have here in the studio are head type 20s, and they're monsters. If my room wasn't so small and shit, they'd be even better. Key change there, I was so proud of that. Oh, I just like changing the bass note. It's 
So it looks like I've got 87 tracks going on this one, which is actually less than I've had in the past on some other tunes. Everyone says this sounds like the Goonies. It's just like a descending seventh arpeggio. I was definitely pleased with the mix down on this one. I don't know whether I fluked it or whether it was just a happy result of approaching my general production of this quite sensibly. But it seemed sensible at the time. We're, about, we're probably about to discover it wasn't. Hey, thanks for the sub, Captain Coach. So turn it down a bit so I can talk. And I, last time I listened back and I was going, hello, I'm talking really weirdly because the music's loud in my headphones. I had to do this on headphones so that um, it's not doubling up on the microphones. Very fiddly system here. So yeah, so there you go. We've got the track there, so there's uh, lots of questions coming in here. So yeah, for the mix down, I'm pretty sure I did some sensible bus business. Uh, pretty much the same ones I usually do. Yeah, I've got, so let's switch to the screen share view so you can see a bit clearer. So yeah, the kick, you've got the kicks there, the hats and stuff, the snares there cushion they're on their own one the bass is all on its own one pads sub bass breaks vocals there's not really vocals in this apart from me just going Hoo! you Hoo! Hoo! I think the drum programming on this helped it sound good like I don't normally I don't know program stuff with much details it's, but that like the little st stuttery snare in there so if we're looking at the synths from the beginning here there's a lot of automation going on um, Pavel's asking uh, do I ask people to remix my track or the other way around um, depends uh, I'm always happy to remix other people's tracks if they pay me <laughs> especially now uh, quite often in drum and bass you'll do swaps 
So, um, you know, you, you want some other versions of your track doing, so you'll ask drum and bass producers you think would, would do a remix the way you kind of imagine it. Um, and then in return you do a remix for them and they pick a song of theirs that you'd do a good remix of. That seems to work best nowadays. Like, um, if you're lucky, then a big major artist comes up and goes, ooh, John B is really cool in drum and bass right now. We've got to get him to do a remix. And then Nanny Mac will play it on Radio 1 and we'll get some credibility for our new artist. Um, but that's kind of how it works. So we've got these synths here. What do we got? June, lots of June. That's a nice pad. Shall I turn the volume up a little bit? Uh, got a high string up there, just a single note. I'm a big fan of them. EQ'd off, rolling out the bass that's not being used. Then, ah, here's my favorite dark pad that I usually just use for the, the lows on pad stuff. Um, more volume on the tune. There you go. Last time I was worried you couldn't hear my voice. Um, there you go, so that's better. Yeah, so that the low end pad there, I just always seem to use a, this preset on the AS2 called Dark Pad, and then, you know, tweak it a bit for whatever's needed. Um, I'll keep this bit looping here. So then here we've got, um, these were like out of the Arturia Matrix 12, and I've bounced them. That's key, uh, getting like, the really, getting that really nice sound here. Um, struggling to find my synths. That really nice arpeggio sound that was key like it took me ages to find the right preset for that and then do the usual little tweaks on it no cowbell in this one Adrian <laughs> so those are all the sort of string bits we had uh, go through and unsolo everything so we're all in do that a bit. and you can see I've got my automation here this point here 97 is where it all just Oh, that's a... Oh, this one was... Oh, yeah, it was an interesting layout, this one. Basically, it's all intro. Drums don't come in until basically it, when it drops. It drops. Except I was trying to make fog horns in my own little way. Uh, so how about we have a look at the fog horns? So, how can I do this then? So, first one was this. Coming out massive. Going through overdrive, trash, noise gate, channel EQ, compressor, limiter, like everything. Um, and then I was automating the send to a big reverb there. At the end. I can tell I'm bellowing. I'm like, hello! Um... So you can see this purple line here is the send to the bus of the reverb, so I really wanted to blast out the um, when the filter opens there. So that gives it all the nice weirdness and it's sort of not like your average foghorn that. Um, and then I had this. Ah, yeah, so I'm going to do this. So this sound here that comes in is this. I stuck that in there because I wanted it to emulate the sound. You know when you're backstage in a club and uh, the bass is rum rumbling and the walls are shaking and you can't quite put your finger on it. You're like, what's going on there? Um, so I, I made that sound. Uh, it's just coming out of serum, just some like random thing, overdriven. And it's basically there to make, to confuse you and make you feel like something's shaking. <laughs> um, then here we have the sub, which is just a straight up EXS24 sub, except it's loading up in sampler now. Compressing it, distorting it to really give it a good sub. 
Um, and then what else have we got here on this one? Another, oh, that's a secondary sub here. Same thing, it's just, yeah, that's right. So we've got the main foghorn goes there. Um, no toxicity in the chat. Calm it down. It's fat. Behave. Um, and then I've got one here called Base Mission. Um, ah, yeah, that does the dome. Dome, 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 dome. So there's sort of lots of little. That's that seems to be I have most success with bases lately. You can see all of these ones here. Wow. Four one, four one two, four one three, four one four, four one five. Sub base, sub base two, and then base mission, and then a high base. I'll usually like have the sub, but if if it's a base sound I like, I might double it up and then basically base. Have the low end without much fuckery on it, and then on. The, yeah, so I, I think I've actually done that here. So you can see, you can see on the high, looks like it's the same song. And then on the high version, I've rolled off the bottom and then it's done the the tops. And so the, the bass just remains solid and nice. And then uh, it's not like sort of weird and crap, and it just separates it out. How's the volumes and everything? Can you hear me okay? Uh, turn my voice down. Turn that down. It's a bit hard. I need a fader here. I can just sort of fade to fade the other music down. Thanks for the follow, Junglist86. Um, so we had fog horns there. Uh, we've the drums. I'll just I'll do you a loop and show you how the drums are built up. Um, I have to see. This is my first time looking at this project in a year, so uh, you're gonna have to bear with me. So it looks like at the top of here, it's mainly the synths and stuff, and then once we get to here, yeah, it's the drums. So, start with the boring the hats, and then I've got this wicked like whoop kick. That's really that was crucial in getting this one sounding sounding nice. I think that was off the Native Instruments sound something or other. I think I got it off subscribed for a bit, um, and then a transient. Yeah, so that's just the, the transient bit to add a bit of bite to that kick. And then... Oh, it says dill kick. This is maybe a... Yeah, that's like a distorted, maybe, bit of a Dillinger kick off something or other of his. Um, with all of the bass rolled off so it doesn't interfere with the big whoop. Then new snare. I remember it took me ages to sort of get a snare I was happy with um, and it looks like I've bounced in place this one so I don't know where it originally came from and then ah this was crucial yeah having that nice I think with this little fill-in snare I might have even shuffled it yeah you can see the position is it's not even on the grid I deliberately moved it up so it was late and I think that really worked to give the beat a sort of bit of a something shuffle. Just reading the chat here. What's sounding so distorted? <clears throat> um. Yeah, I don't really use parallel compression too much. Uh, sorry, I'm just gonna. How do I? How do I ban somebody? Um, how do you time someone out? There you go, timing him out. Sorry, mate. Um, uh, it shouldn't be. Uh, maybe 
It's sounding okay to me, but maybe how I'm sending it to you guys. I mean, this is, you're getting the master thing, so I, I really pushed it on the mastering. Um, it's going through like... Yeah. It shouldn't be too distorted. Sounding okay to me on the, on the headphones here. Maybe it's just... Oh, the kick sounds clipped. Not to me. I'm looking at the levels here. They seem all right. I need to check if I'm doing pre-fader or post-fader metering, but I mean, the overall mix sound of this is one of, sounded one of the best I did in a while, so. I'm happy with it. Um, so then on the snare, so I added a tail. This is uh, my usual trick that I learned off Metric, actually. Um, just sticking a, a white noise and then getting it, to, getting it to sound how you like, just with the envelope and then EQing it. Just so it's just there a little touch and adds sort of reliable tops to what you want to be doing. Uh, let's unmute everything. Um, and then I've got random break here all stretched up. Really quiet compared to everything else, but just to give it some sort of um, liveness. It's not even particularly... I think I... Uh, just quickly uh, stretched it using the logic pitch and time thingy. John, when's the robot sunglasses restocking? Uh, I don't know. I haven't got. I'll have to buy a whole bunch more in order to sell them. So I'll um, I'll see if I can get hold of some more, and uh, if I can, then I'll, I'll restock them and I'll post it. <laughs> Ozone just wanted a shout out. Um, thanks Stitch Jones, thanks for the host. So what else we got? We've got a, a shaker. There's lots of the drums just sort of coming in and out here as well. I think because of the way the bass was switching up. Like the shaker comes in there kind of faster than you would expect. It would be more like after 16. And then I've got various breaks here. That one, that's the same sample I used on Site Beyond. And then, oh, this one, sort of the Dark Soldier Break is in there. That's a good, good shakery one I started using the last year or two. Uh, and then what we've got here is another one. Oh, yeah, Promise. And then we missed out all the other fog horns. Yeah, so I made these. Uh, so what's the serum one here? This. Uh, oh yeah, that's the the walls shaking one. This is the really obscene fog horn. Um, I was just trying to get the resonance. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! Oh bloody! Oh, I can't show you my authentication. Hang on. Uh, oh no! You'll look at my screen. It's still working, so uh, yeah, I'm not. It's gone into demo. The, the only thing I don't like about the Roland Cloud is it keeps on asking me to log in. I think every time I reboot, it doesn't remember that I've logged in. Um, but yeah, so I made this foghorn with the SH101. I think that's a good foghorn, that. It's a good foghorn. It's a. It's the foghorn! Foghorn! Shiver me timber! I the Johnny Roger! Yeah. <laughs> Um, Foghorn 5. What's Foghorn 5? Oh, is there another one? I think it's the same one, just lower. And I put it on its own channel so I could... Yeah. Oof. Yeah, it's going through all sorts of horrible... Like, two overdrives, trash, and then some horrible EQ, just boosting everything like an idiot. But it sounded how I wanted to. When it, when it all... I think the secret to Foghorns for me is sort of the top bit 
top half just has to be all distorted and horrible and weird resonance and everything and then you just provide the the like proper quality bass underneath with a, a pure sub and then it's sort of job done but you just have to sort of spend a while getting the, the weird sound in there um... <laughs> Salute the Foghorn guy. Um, so what else do we have here? Oh, it says, ah, I used a little, yeah, that's a little, little dom break. I think I sneaked a bit of in there. And a bit of a sort of conflicty worm break. Not in for the whole bit though. You can see, so this whole section here that's in red. If I go a bit bigger. So this whole first section here is like the first first drop and things are all switching around quite a bit like I was muting muting bits of bobs of the drums when the fog horns were in just to make a bit more space then of course the old John B trick stick the crowd cheers in there when the breakdown kicks in so everyone thinks oh people, the guy next to me is cheering I'll cheer as well yeah uh, uh, lots of, yes, yeah, so all these blue bits here are my swooshes and booms. Okay, that one there, standard just sort of white noise sweeps. I've just got millions of them that I use over and over again in various different ways. Uh, all the sort of cinematic booms, like that. All fed through big monstrous reverbs on the... RC48, which is all on the same kind of settings on my usual buses that I use. If we have a look at my effects buses, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, god, yeah, some of them are not even doing are they not even on? Ah, oh, no, 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 they're here, yeah, so yeah, I just have these. I'm, I'm gonna be changing these sort of uh, on my new template, um. But yeah, for, for years I just run on the same same few effects buses, and you can see there's the fifth and the sixth one here are um, greyed out because they're not even being used in this one. But I have like big reverb and then a delay that is just sort of in time, just pinging left and right, um, and then an even bigger reverb, and then a room one that I kind of use sometimes just on kicks and snares a little bit to sort of make it sound slightly less sterile ah thanks for the subscription jungle spinner nice one um and then i have a dub delay as well uh, but it wasn't used in this one um and then th that's all all you need really because you can uh vary what you're sending to it by your oh it's hard you, i suppose you can see the mouse pointer just about about but i can't zoom in on um the screen to show you closer really um ah but i could if i made uh -huh. another scene with a bit of a zoom in maybe i'll do that for next time um but yeah i just if i want more reverb i don't make another bus with heavier longer reverb or something i just send more to that bus um and then if we have a look at the the base bus here Your, we've got side chain going on again just using my alloys it looks to me like I was side chaining the snare as well bus 32 and 33 I've got two two instances of alloy side chaining the bass Bus 32. Doesn't bloody number them. Oh, here. So, yeah, the kit. Yeah, so I was. I'm basically side chaining the base of the kick and the snare. Because I really wanted the kick and the snare to stick through and be like really stompy. And it did really seem to work on this. I don't. I think that was just like a combination of the choice of sounds and trying to keep things simple when I was putting it together. 
But I might do that again, uh, especially if it's something with a lot of bass going on. Um, just double side chaining it. The good, th the thing I love with Alloy is you can just see exactly what it's doing. It makes the little indentations for when it's ducking stuff. And I like that. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, and there's a bit of a sort of time stretchy vocal sample in here as well that comes in that adds to it. No idea where I got that from. Um, so, yeah, looking at the the mix down here, everything's going to a bus. And I think that was key in this sounding decent as well. I, I was pretty hardcore about... And I really brought this, the, the snare down. I think... In some of my original mixes, I seem to have a habit of making the snare much louder than it needs to be. Just because I'm like, I can't hear it, it's not cutting through, and I keep turning it up, and then everything else suffers as a result, and the whole thing just doesn't sound loud enough. Um, so, ah, and of course, we haven't included the best bit, which is those lovely Blade Runner synths. Oh, wow, which coming out of the June oh my god I would have I would have had them coming out of the CSAE yeah what's the it always takes me ages oh it's called Blade Gunner ST it always takes me ages I'm like where's the Blade Runner synth because I always want to use it in everything I do that's so beautiful that's like the best best Vangelis Blade Runner kind of synth reproduction I found on anything um So if you look at in the before the breakdown, I actually layered them up. So we've got that one, and then I put a that's like a Gary Newman. Um, oh, I think this preset's called like Newmanizer or something like that. It's out of uh, don't show them my serial numbers. Uh, yeah, Newman String Machine. This is a really good synth. I should turn it up a little bit. So yeah. So uh, hey, Elside, how you doing? So I put this in there because the original kind of Blade Runner synth didn't have quite enough um, like constant highs and I wanted it to be a bit more sparkly so you can hear them together sounds a lot better and then there's another one here let's check this ah I see so for this bit can you hear that okay I just went for a really basic. This is an ES2. Crappy pressure horn. Did I save that preset? Or is that from the original, original, original? Somehow legacied up through various generations of Macs. <laughs> Knowing me, it probably was. Um, so that's just like the world's most basic Vangelis CSAE attempt. But I guess I used that in there again. The same way I sort of used the... The, the sub, the, just the pure sub on a lot of stuff is to fill in the gaps. So when you add all three of those together, it just it gives me exactly what I want. Because a lot of times you'll have a synth sound that you really like, and um, it's not quite there, and you spend ages tweaking it to get it, you know, boost up the bass bit or something, and you just ruin the essence of what made that sound good. And, this goes back to my sort of usual vibe of layering stuff up um, to get where I want. As long as you don't end up doing weird phasing stuff and doubling up on all your frequencies and everything. like With that sort of stuff it doesn't matter too much, but with basses you've got to be really careful, obviously. Um, what else have we got that's interesting here? I mean, it's quite simple, this track, really. Like, the intro was really, really long. I, wanted to, I did this before playing Let It Roll last year. Was it last year I played Let It Roll? I think it was, yeah. Um, and I just wanted a really big epic, something epic. Uh, and it was also meant to be for the Timelines album. Um, yeah, everyone says this sounds like um, The Goonies, and to me... 
in that synth is the, the Blade Runner. I, I've yet to hear the Goonies bit of the Goonies soundtrack that sounds like the, the, ar, the arpeggio. I keep looking for it when it was. It's drawn. You sampled the Goonies. No, I didn't. So it's, I went for like a big epic kind of intro. And then I thought, right, well, let's just switch for like the most impact. And if you do something like this, it kind of forces people to play it as an intro. Or, you know, and then your song gets noticed more. As we saw, like Goldie was playing this as intro for ages and playing the print works thing. Like it's all these epic videos of uh, everyone in the crowd and him playing this. As, and it was like a really, really big moment. Like that's the most you can ever like hope for when you do something like this. So you can see the arrangement here, like it's a very long intro for drum and bass these days. Normally you'd be fully kicked in by like 32 bars, especially the pop on kind of stuff. Uh, but it's like 19, 97 bars when the drum is coming. I think I had another version where the intro is even longer than that. Hey Joe, Cubstar, how you doing? What's up to Inner Space for? Yeah, Goldie did play it, he played it a lot. Which is a pretty good scene of approval, I'd say. It's what I always aim for. So there you go, I've got the old risers coming in, got a swoosh down the bottom. And uh, a whole bunch of different risers there. And then a the kick rolling up. I wanted to keep the arpeggio rolling through, but staying in the same kind of key. Turn it down now, you won't be able to hear me. I, ugh, what's going on here? Oh, it's oh that's interesting. The, the tools change for different screen sets. That's good. To know. Makes sense. Oh, I think the foghorn's going to start misbehaving because I didn't type in my password on the um, uh, SH101 Roland stuff. Yeah. Thanks for the sub, Command1210. Big up. Mark Clements on Facebook, how you doing? I was just, how do you like it with the other camera then? They're like... I know it works pretty well. I'm actually planning on just whacking this on in the background next time I have a, a proper studio session. While I'm sitting here just noodling away and you can be like, what's John doing? It's so shit. He's mad. Is this really how long it takes to find a snare? <laughs> ah, that's right. And we have another foghorn there. Yeah, see that bass only occurs once. That burr, burr. What was that? That's an FM8. God, it doesn't sound very. Yeah, good old pitch bending makes anything sound good as well. Yeah, again, just through overdrives and stuff. But as you'll notice, I rolled the bass off and um, had a proper solid sub bass underneath it. It's so hot in here. It's so fucking hot. 28 degrees outside. I've already done um, done the basis, but I'll show you all again in a second. So the, the brown ones here are the bass. I think what makes the most important part of the bass is this one here. What really makes that um, big is the automation that's going on. I think it basically, without the autom, it's only I'm only automating the uh, effects But I really wanted to, kind of like some of the old Dillinger stuff. Um, so I really like opened up into the end. As the filter, as well. um, I can't, it doesn't look like. Oh, you know what? Um, there were other automations on the scene that aren't showing up here because we're still. I was getting this message about it when I was loading in. Uh, 
Um, so that's the key foghorn there, but adding the bass to it there as well. He does it. Matt Delahousier, how you doing, sir? Maidenhead massive inside the place. So that's uh, somebody sitting there with their finger on record. Oh, wait, to record my bass. Oh, sorry, I have to keep turning the volume up and down. Because it's constant volume for me and my headphones. What notes are the subs? Let's check. They should be F. Um, but they might not be. It's a G. Ooh, controversial. Controversial. But it sounded, it sounded all right. Um, when I play it out. Um, but then again, I try not to compare myself to like perfectly produced noisier stuff or, or I just cry and jump off a cliff but this was this sounded good in the clubs and stuff when I played it in clubs if you remember what they were like do you remember what clubs were like do I remember what jungle clubs were like uh, uh. Uh, anyway <laughs> so um that's probably about it for this track, really. I mean, um, anybody got any other questions apart from what I've shown? Yeah, sub mix downs. Head, get some headphones and good speakers. A B stuff. Check check your tune how it sounds compared to other ones. What overdrives do I use? I really just use the built-in Logic stuff for the overdrives and distortion. Um, that's that's it really like you know uh, I used to use, also use um, guitar pedal emulator stuff uh, again mainly just the logic ones but I've got the whole native instrument suite so ah nice oh that was something I wanted to set up was um, a mobile camera I might even be able to do that if you just bear with me um, wireless OBS ca damn it yeah I meant to set this up get started we access your camera allow camera access okay microphone okay make sure you've installed the plugin ah i might not have done that uh oh i don't think i have uh let's just see video capture device uh, let's see i've got epoch cam that might work let's see this one's crap though Oh, yeah, what's up? Come on, how good is this? This is my phone. I can give you a tour. Okay, I'll, I'll delete that from this um, scene. Uh, duplicate this. Give me a second uh, on my OBS business here. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, that's neat. It means I can give you a little video tour of the studio. Uh, add video capture device. Create video capture device. Epoch cam. 1280p, why not? There you go. Ah, except now you can't see me. What if I do that? Oh, no. Uh, what about that? What about that? that there you go and we can turn off the display capture Boop. there you go so I've got my head I don't need my headphones on do I can you hear me are you seeing this is it working oh wow what's going on Oh, this is pretty neat. Cool. All right. So, I'll take my headphones off. I don't know if you can hear me over the fan. Uh -huh. So, this is the studio. Um, I'm in a small room here, so there was not a lot I could do. And the unfortunate thing is, it's pretty square. Can you hear me? Okay. 
Um, so I spoke to a guy um, at Blue Frog Audio. This is amazing. This is just my phone wirelessly connected. Look at the computers. Whoa. Um, let's just move. So these were all custom made panels by Blue Frog Audio. Um, the, the, I can post the link. It's just a, a one man band. Um, I gave him the shape of my room and we designed it together. He recommended where we put the bass traps. The issues I have is my windows here. So I could, I've basically this panel here can be moved around. It's on, on little feet. And then this side panel here, you, you need your, your left and your right. To, to stop those first reflections that's the most important stuff is stuff that bounces off the ceiling and hits your head here and then stuff that goes on the left and the right um, so the one here is on wheels it was originally just on things where I put wheels on and then I can just roll it out of the way and then that's all my cables and stuff there's my scales for measuring the orders for the web store so I get the postage right so then the panels here on the top uh, inside these it's like rock wool and stuff so these are suspended from the ceiling uh, I had to be really careful and drill into the plasterboard using special plasterboard screws to then uh, suspend them from uh, with little chain things um, Alexa make studio white hey, woo, there you go it's a bit brighter okay. Um, and it's important with acoustic panels to have a gap behind them that helps them absorb stuff. The ones on the wall are mounted on like battens on the wall. If uh, I'll have to find, I'll, I'll make a. Oh my god! <laughs> look at my shorts. Da, da, da. It's so hot in here. I've got my flipping shorts on. Um, and then on this side to bounce off the back, I've got two panels up there on the wall, um, and then a base trap there. In a perfect world, it would go right down, but I need space for all my cables and stuff. That's pretty embarrassing. And there, so the base trap goes as far down as it can, and then on this side, the base trap goes right down. There. So <laughs> Please don't be laughing at my fucking... Uh... Cool, so I can turn this one off now, I think. Oh, that's good. Oh, and then, so under here is all the, the computers, so the Mac Pro is um, the studio one that we're using now. The Mac in the middle used to be my studio Mac and now it's demoted to just running it, just that screen there and that's what I use to stream from when I'm doing my other um, stream, the like promos one. And then the black one on the left is a PC that I use for gaming and s sort of streaming and media server type stuff and then this whole thing is on wheels that I made uh, so that it can be rolled out so I can get to all the cables and stuff at the back and then I've got this cable trunking stuff that runs all along the back there and then also all along the back here out to there so yeah loads of stuff and then uh, these are the speakers oh this is good I can give you a bit of a John B's eye view so you've got the, the lovely head type 20s all the audio files probably scorned me for the Mackie, but I ran out of money. It does the job. It's a good um, monitor controller. Here's my special dub plate drinks coasters. And then I have a Apple Magic thingy bob because uh, it's really useful for just scrolling. Uh, oh, if it's working right. Oh, it's not set up on this one, is it not? be able to scroll there you go yeah so I can just scroll around with my left hand on there which I've, I've found that really really useful and then if you're editing waveforms and things you can just do that uh, what else and then so there's the I bought this little little native instruments controller there because I just you don't really have space on the desk when you've got you I find you know once I've played my stuff in um, <laughs> um you don't really need a big keyboard here so I moved the main one over here and I think working on on headphones the only problem is like if you're playing stuff going along with the music and it's on the speakers you uh, 
if you're sat over here, you're not hearing it properly. So I'll be working on headphones more, especially as I'm streaming it. Um, and then come here to play the nice stuff. La, 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 la. That's not connected. Um, so yeah, there you go. Right, I'm going to switch it back to the main view. There we go. Oh, that that's good. I'm glad we got that working. That can be good fun. When I'm doing my streams upstairs, I can get Magda to use her um, phone and wander around in the loft filming from a distance. Yeah, first person John B simulator. Oh my God, look at that. Look at that. Look at the bald spot. It's happening. I'm going to have to do a mohawk to cover it up or something. Cool. So, uh, how's me question and answer any are we playing anything i should play the music in the background really quietly so uh yeah i should probably knock it on the head soon ish i'm just looking at the chat hi chris 0191 how you doing mate good to see you again what synth did i use for travelogue oh wow that was when i did travelogue uh it was when i still lived at my parents house it was like early on in my career and I still had quite a lot of outboard stuff then. Um, I think like an original Oberheim Matrix 1000. Uh, Wee Breaks 187, thanks for subscribing. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, I for my synths, for Travelogue, uh, I, the Matrix, Ober, the Oberheim Matrix 1000, I had two of them. And I used them so much. that the, the, On the original Pressure as well, all of the, the brass sounds and stuff like that came from... Uh, from that um, I had big fan of Roland's as well I had like a matrix MKS 70 and MKS 50 use them for more for bass sounds I know on secrets there's a sort of synth that goes wow that was out of the MKS 50 I think it's the only sound I ever used on that actually um, how long did it take me to produce up all night says Chris 0191 uh, Probably only a day of a day or two, really. It was one of those ones that came together really quickly, and um, I was just in the zone, and I knew it was going to be massive. And I, it was when I was younger, and I just sort of went in and went on it and got stuff done. Whereas now I've sort of, it's like Gear Fear. It's like this video game I play called Escape from Tarkov, where like you're scared of going in to like actually do it and play the game because you think you might, you know, you'll die and lose your weapons. Or like in the case of production, it's like. When you've got a good tune going and you're there, I'm like, I keep putting off working on it again because I don't want to ruin it and make it worse. So I need to get out of that mindset. Um, looking back through some of the questions I might have missed then when I was doing the uh, the wireless thingy bob. Oh, Tasha Baxter's got the same shoes. I brought these out of retirement. I bought these about two years ago. Never, ever, ever, ever wore them because uh, I like them so much, but I didn't want to like get them messy. And today I was like, I'm going to wear nice new shoes because I'm just walking around the house and I'm going to get it. And I'm wearing them with Reebok socks because I'm an idiot old man who doesn't care. <laughs> so that's a cardinal sin, isn't it? Mixing your uh, sports sports brands. Did I sample the Hoover bass in? Yeah, like there's loads of layered up Reese's and stuff on Up All Night. And like a, a lot of my basses, um, I'll sample a bass from somewhere else and then layer it up with my own samples and synths and things like that. Cool, cool, cool. So what well, we got the fog horn. And it's the fog horn. Fog horn. Shiver me timber. Ice the jelly rock. Yeah, that's a throwback from um, Friday night's Star Trek session. Looking forward to doing some more of them. Uh, Mark Saunders on Facebook says, do I prefer to make sounds or do I usually write from scratch? Usually I'll just browse through presets until I find something that's kind of inspirational. Um, and then I'll tweak it to fit exactly how I want. Or, or I'll have an idea for a sound in mind that I want and I'll go and find a preset that's the ballpark and then i'll tweak it to sound how i want um flatulent gonad nice one thanks for the um the raid the other day as well i noticed that coming in on i think on sunday night brought a bunch of people into the stream that was really cool so thanks a lot for that big up glob monster 
When we were kids, if you wore two separate brands, they would say you're perpetrating. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I'm just looking back at the chat to see if I've missed. Joe Cubstar says, what door am I using? Uh, he's on mobile, so his screen's super tiny. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. it's super tiny for everybody anyway, because I have a 4K display here, so it squidges it down even, even smaller, even when it's on the full screen one like this. Uh, it must be very hard for you to see stuff, but um, I think you, you still get a good idea of what's going on, especially if I'm explaining it to you. Um, yeah, I use Logic X on a Mac. I, I always have. Before that, I was on an Atari using uh, Pro 12, uh, Pro 24, Notator, stuff like that. Oliver, Vectorburn! Oh, wow, how are you doing, mate? Oliver Scott there on Facebook. Blast from the past, absolute legend of drum and bass. Good to see you, mate. Uh, looking for some more comments. Oh, capitals. Uh, oh yeah, I stopped it saying spamming. Hopefully no one's getting told off for using all the emojis and things like that today. The, I had this, the restream bot, um, or the whatever it was, the, the stream elements bot. It's getting, I need to shut the window, but it's going to kill me because all the flies are loving all my lights. Give me a minute. Don't laugh at my shorts. <laughs> Alexa, turn on Studio Strip 2. I forgot to have my nice other one on. There's a light that goes under here. Come on. Ooh, Ooh that's a bit blue now. Alexa, turn off Studio Strip 2. Okay. Hey, yeah, I just wanted to show that off, didn't I? Ah, in the Star Trek scene there was no sound. Now there is sound. Add audio input capture. Doink. There we go. That should be playing. Cool. Yeah, so um, that was Pressure 2019. I think I showed you everything, really. It's pretty simple. You've just got a big cluster of pads and strings and arpeggios and stuff. Not too many elements, really. I tried to keep like the musical elements simple, because, I mean, the original was like that anyway. I didn't add any new tuny bits or anything. Um, then you've got the drums, which are relatively simple too, although they, what's complicated about them is stuff comes in and out and breaks chop in and out. Then you've got the fog horns and the bass, which are relatively simple, but I mean, there are like eight different parts there. Um, but the overall like tune is not too bad. And then just a few swooshes and booms, not even as many as I normally have. It's somehow gone to 87 tracks in total. Uh, my approach to arrangement, Legendary Taunt, is asking... Um, there's With drum and bass, there's like only a few variants, if you're being realistic about things. I know everyone likes to say, oh, with drum and bass, you can do anything you like. Um, and you can, but you won't get played if you don't tick a few boxes. Um, thanks for the follow from Just Husk HD. Um, so I tend to use these coloured areas at the top to just remind me of what section of the track I'm in. Um, to give me an eye. It, it, it helps like sort of set goals for while you're um, producing so you know how near you are to having it completed and, and stuff. But, you know... You just got to decide, is it going to be a long track or a short track? You know, short tracks now are like three and a half minutes for drum and bass. Like when I started, they're nine minutes long sometimes. So really, you're just thinking about what's the drop going to be like? How are you going to lead to that? Is it going to be one of those tunes where the drums start at the beginning, then you have a little breakdown, then everything kicks in with the bass? Or is it going to be one where everything progressively comes in and it's just like rolls out and then the bass just rolls in? Or is it going to be a track where there's a beatless intro and then it all kicks in, which is kind of like this one here. It's like a very long beatless intro up until like the 97th bar. And then you decide, is it just going to roll out or am I going to have a 
a breakdown and then when it comes back in is it going to be the same or are you going to switch it up and have more of a, like a second drop kind of thing um it's pretty formulaic and if you if you get yourself anything like Ableton and you find a bunch of tracks maybe by the same producer load them all in and stack them on top of each other you would very likely find that they almost always have the same layout or very identical like um I, I kind of I, I mean you always know this but um when you see it for the first time you're like holy shit um and like when I was making a few bootlegs and stuff for let it roll and sun and bass and stuff I was loading up a, a bunch of old, like, tried and tested favourites, like Mr. Happy and a bunch of old sub-focus tunes and, and stuff, and um, really found how there's not that many different variants in overall drum and bass arrangement, in especially in big tunes. You know, usually they're big for a reason, and that's because it has a successful arrangement that's good fun to mix as a DJ. Like, you're going to be inclined to play tunes that you enjoy playing that are good fun to DJ and mix well and you know feels good rather than a struggle um, yes rollers are a subgenre apparently I don't know I don't call them rollers anyway it's foghorn tunes rollers are like what Randall plays like stuff that you know roll on like I can't I can't think like Johnny L tunes just stuff that just keeps going on and there's a head bobber and like that's a roller to me like a classic drum and bass style like what what the kids are calling rollers are foghorn tunes <laughs> sexy legs thank you <laughs> they don't help with any drum and bass they just ache all the time from fucking running and standing up doing diy and gardening Oh wow, so Hi, John. Oh, Uli tipped $15. Thank you very much, Uli. Respect, mate. Thanks a lot, Danke schön. You're catching me here in a very flipping hot studio. I've got a, I, thank God I bought a new fan um, this week. I, I was standing at the allotment on Sunday and I, I was like, this, this is pretty hot. The studio's already hot. And I looked at the weather forecast and um, it was said it was going to be like 35 centigrade most days this week and i was like oh shit i bet all the fans on amazon are going to be really really expensive now um and there weren't and i found this one it's made by black and decker who are a pretty reliable company um so i've got a nice big fan that's sitting there but it's still boiling in here no ac because i'm in the uk like we don't really have air conditioning in houses here we don't normally need them if we get a heat wave like this it's um you know pretty rare and you just have to sort of suck it up for a week and, and deal with it oh amazing 360 is my biggest fan oh yeah no this is my biggest fan the black and decker one <laughs> at the moment and it's cool oh, yeah. i'm more of an industrial fan myself or a big metal fan yeah there's some some memes there on that one um so yeah i am i am tempted to uh yeah what's the weather forecast like uh bbc weather oh good it's thunder oh thunder doesn't start till no thunder tonight it's still gonna be 30 yeah we're not gonna get cooler till later in the week that's really annoying when i need to be working in the studio most of the time um I am growing chilies, but they're a few of them have got some chilies. I, I spotted today, but like all of my big, super hot ones that I grow at home and looking a bit sad, um, and haven't really got many pods growing on them. So you'd, you'd think with this good weather they'll be all right, but ugh, it's it's hard with the sort of um, uh, genetically engineered chilies. <laughs> they're, they're not the healthiest ones. Uh, d -d 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 -d. Do I like industrial and metal music? Absolutely, mass. Yeah, huge, huge. Uh, not metal so much, but um, I went through a big phase of like proper early industrial, like throbbing gristle and White House and non, uh, um, like Nine Inch Nails first, and like they're the ones I listen to most now, just as the sound keeps developing and Trent Reznor's doing all the interesting ambient stuff and um, yeah, I still listen to Nine Inch Nails a lot. Um, 
Do I plan my DJ sets? Yes, absolutely. Um, I use Serato, so it's quite easy to plan them. Um, I put a lot of time and effort into preparing my sets and, tr you know, especially like festivals, because you've got 60 minutes, two minutes a track, or one minute a track. You've only got 60 tracks you can play. Uh, I'm adding about 250 tracks a month into my Serato of new stuff that I like enough to want to play. So you've really got to um, narrow it down, work out what you want to play, try and get um, uh, a sensible order that works, especially when you make life difficult for yourself like me by playing all sorts of random different stuff that doesn't always mix into each other easily. So, um, yeah. Um, there was another question here. Somebody said, do I like Nitsa Ebb? Yes. Um, not super knowledgeable about them, but I listen to them quite a lot when I'm jogging there's a playlist i have on spotify called half marathon um which i'm trying to pull up for you now um might even be oh, i can share it with the twitch chat share copy playlist link uh yeah and i have like quite a lot of nitsareb in here yeah, 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 Nitsareb. Isn't it funny how your body works? Join the chant, yeah. I think there's quite a bit of um, mileage to be had in taking that EBM uh, sound into uh, drum and bass. Like, it's the right kind of tempo, like the old sort of FM bass sounds. EBM, not to be confused with EDM, electronic body music. That's Nitsareb and DAF and stuff like that. I really love that stuff and... Um, if I could make enough of it, that's what my DJ sets would be like. Would be sort of drum and bass, like Daff and Nitsareb. <laughs> uh, keep trying, but it's too hot in the studio. And I have to keep streaming and doing Star Trek things. <laughs> KMFDM, I never really got into, but I know they're they're massive. Um, oh, Front 242 as well, yep. They're, they're amazing. My friend Casey that was in the chat earlier. Uh -huh! um, Alpha Quadrant. Uh, he DJs a lot of industrial stuff out in uh, Florida and America. He's he's one of my most knowledgeable um, industrial music mates. Um, and Rico, who's my label manager at SRD, he's uh, he goes way back with all the, the proper proper stuff. Um, so those those two guys are always there if I need advice on what to listen to in that kind of world. So yeah, oh, the other thing I was gonna do, um, I won't do it today because it's getting late now, but um, I hooked up with the guys from Arturia last week and they've sorted me out with their whole suite of plugins. Um, I'll stick my headphones on, I'll just give you a quick blast. Uh, we've got mad latency on everything here. Um, if I uh, if I can just turn off all of the mastering chain stuff, that might help me out a bit. Um, no, it's not. Uh, okay, let's have a new one. Uh, da -da -da -da. So they've given me um, the whole, well like on an artist deal the whole load of all of this where's the this one just blew me away um, da, 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 da. no I'm gonna go in raw where's the uh, volume let's turn that up a bit oh we're on quiet as well <laughs> That's the like the classic art of noise. Oh, it's I've got so much latency here. You won't really notice, but there's a, uh, there's a delay of about one second between when I press the key and when you hear that. I had a quick go through these the other day, and so this is like, is it like um, a fair light? This is perfect for me. Just absolute fucking pimp synth stuff 
And these are, I don't have any of these samples on any of my other stuff. Recognize that black celebration. Yep, Fairlight. These things were about 50 grand. Oh yeah, yes, that as well. The original, just beat it. Like Sing Clavier or something, wasn't it? So good. Some weird shit as well. Um, the synths are just beautiful. Uh, um, yeah, the CS80. I've uh, I already had the CS80, uh, and it's you know legendary synth. This was the one I'd always go to for those uh, Blade Runner samples. Oh. oh, that's nice. That reminds me of my grandpa's old organ. Had on those old Yamaha. Let's see, can you search? Here we go, pads. Give me some nice pads. Nice one. Oh yeah, because these had a massive ribbon controller on them for all that pitch bending stuff there. My friend Hal's got one in his studio in London. It's such a beautiful thing. Oh, the filter SEM. Uh, that's one I don't think I've tried. Is that a synth? SEM version 2. I don't think I've opened this one yet. Oh, yes, I fucking love this. Oh, my God. Yeah, this one. Fuck out. If I turn off the reverb. Yeah, this one was... I was like, shit, I'm going to make, like, punk electro drum and bass. All these arpeggios are banging. And that's synchronising to drum and bass speed, I think. Oh, yeah. Whoa, that's some, like, 80s horror movie stuff. That's very, like, daft. Arpeggio, give me some arpeggio. When I tried it on my uh, laptop, there was some wicked... Uh... Oh, there we go. Yeah, Arturi has got a, a deal on at the moment. Oh, 
Oh, oh sorry, Captain Coach, I didn't see what you were uh, asking there. Meth, just an inside info. Oh, Black Sun Empire's dead house, right. Yeah, Black Sun Empire are like the kings of these sorts of arpeggios. In, um, oh, that's good, that one. Is this syncing up? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's drumming bass speed. Oh. Let's see if I can just get the drums. Concept. Oh, my latency's so bad I can't hit play at the right time. This whole synth is like an album's work, like a whole album concept. <laughs> that, and that's really nice solid bass as well, like a lot of these analog synths, you can't rely on them for sort of having a proper low end, but that sounds good to me on these headphones. Find one that's uh, more like it's a red vibe. Oh, oh, that's beautiful. going through my reverbs and stuff. Very soft machine now. That's like prog old oh, progressive rock. I need like a wizard costume. Alexa, make studio purple. Very nice. I guess I'll just go through a few more <laughs> presets. Ah, 
that's more what I was looking for. I want some kind of aggressive FME arpeggio. Ah, yes. That's good. With this, I like with these arpeggio arpeggiators. They're just sort of patterns I wouldn't normally reach for. speed ah it's in triple time Ooh, I'm just recycling that break there just to see how this sort of sits in this kind of environment that's uh Harmonic 1976. It's a good preset, that baby. Yeah, just sort of. Let's just fuck up this project. I'm just going to record a bit in here just to see if the idea of the vibe. I just... This is not me making a tune, but. Um... There. It's just, just having a bit of a noodle, just noodling there. Talking about numbers, did you hear the rip-off Millbrook did? <laughs> uh, I did, uh, and I decided not to make a big deal out of it. Um, and I actually made a bootleg that was basically the original, like the Cameron Crooked remix of numbers. And then I chopped into the Millbrook track and then went back into my one so sounded good it sounded like i had a new remix of it that no one else did so um whatever uh, it's a good track that he made anyway but you know everything's derivative in one way or another isn't it so never mind um i really like that so this is the arturia semv what is this based on? What's the original synth of this? Oh, that's nice. It's a really good solid sounding bass. People that don't 
like arpeggios right now, like, what's this? I don't like arpeggios. Let's have a quick listen to some other Arturia stuff. Um, I was going to do like a whole studio session just going through them and... Uh... Oh, Synclavia. Or oh, a Prophet. Jupiter. DX7. Oh yeah, seeing as I'm wearing the t-shirt, we need to do a... Uh... The... Oh, beautiful. That's my latency over here. I always wanted a, a DX7. Uh... Oh, oh, yes! There. That's the, the cure of Seamus and Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, oh, it's the Howard Jones. Well, that's the, I mean, that's, that's the classic FM slap bass, but that's beautiful. Oh, more ops. through loads of reverb. Yeah, we'll go through these another time when I haven't got loads of latency on because this is like a grandfathered in old project I had and um, there's a huge delay between <laughs> pressing the keys and anything coming out so it, it just means that everything I'm playing just sounds a bit weird and shit. Um, cool, all right. Uh, SEM was an Oberheim originally, was it? Oh, uh, you got auto modded. Damn it! Uh, so I set, I changed the auto mod rules a bit today. Um, and if you're a regular or um, a subscriber, it won't mod you out on the links. Uh, but maybe I should change that just to everyone. And basically, if anyone starts spamming links, I'll just ban them. I haven't really had any problems with anyone much on the chat yet, so um, that should be cool. Um, Da, 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 da. Uh... Yeah, hold on a second. You're a prime sub, are you? And it wouldn't let you. Oh, that's strange. I'll, um, that's weird because I logged in today and it wouldn't let me... Um... Sorry, yeah, I didn't spot the logo. Um... Yeah, I'll get that changed then. Maybe I just had it set to saying people can't post links at all or something, but... I don't, we haven't had problems with people spamming loads of stuff anyway. Um, for these guys create saying, do I actually work with hardware synths or just emulators? Um, all all software stuff, just because it's impractical for me to be working with them. Um... Oh, you're not, sir. But it's uh, you've got the Prime Gaming logo next to you. Or is that just because you're a Prime Gaming mem... Oh, that's right. So if you've got a Prime Gaming... Uh, membership it shows up on the thing but if you're a subscriber like Jay Willy you get the little purple star aha uh -huh. yeah so yeah you can yeah so that's right so Jay Willy can do it because um, he's a subscriber um, but people that aren't subscribers can't post links I guess I guess that's one of the perks of subscribing <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, oh, I changed the um, emotes today. Um, uh, some of the old... There's only two currently in operation because I removed the other ones and resubmitted them with like proper transparencies so they don't have a white background. So when you spam other people's chats with them, um, you can. So it took a few days for the emotes to show up. Um, yeah, I, I need to work out how to change the subscriber emojis. They're not emojis. They're not emojis, John. They're emotes. You're in Twitch. They're emotes. Um, 
Uh, so I um, need to work that because it'd be cool if uh, if you're a subscriber, you get a a better logo that's somehow more related to me and this channel and what we do and stuff. Um, cool. So yeah, I don't think I've got anything more to add really today. It was good to show you that project. I'm sorry I started late. It's a real, real headache to get this to load in properly into Logic because, as I said, um, when I originally made it, it was on my old Mac, the one that's in the middle down there, um, and there was a bunch of soft synths and things that I don't have um, installed now because uh, I've stripped everything down. Um, so I had to sort of work out how I was going to copy things over and get things sounding similar. That's, there we go, that's all ready to go so I can save this just in case I want to go back on it. Um, it's under badges in the emotes section. Ah, oh, okay, thanks Joe Cubstar. I'll check that out. I had quite a long session today doing random Twitch behind the scenes stuff. Um, I'm also um, going to be adding in a like sound player thing so that when it's on my DJ sets you can uh, play a sound that'll be like rewind or whistle posse and things like that. Um, so... Uh, Good Sfat, thanks very much for the comments, man. Glad you're uh, enjoying the channel and everything. Thanks for tuning in every time. I see you here every time, so that's really good. Uh, cool, yes, yeah, so I'll probably um, start turning this off soon. <laughs> uh, that one. Um, or that one. Um, tomorrow night, hopefully, uh, I'll be streaming playing video games. Uh, playing Escape from Tarkov uh, with my man, the Captain Coach, who's much better at it than me and usually helps me out, um, and his friend, uh, Parry Hotter. <laughs> and um, it's a guy called um, Sampo from UKF who plays Escape from Tarkov as well. So if all goes to plan, we'll have like a gang of four of us and we'll all be chatting and um, I'll be dying and failing miserably, but... Um, it's good fun and uh, it's one of the few things I do to really unwind these days really like as you can see well making music is is unwinding but um, uh -huh. it's rare I'm just sitting here noodling I'm like right got to make this tune got to do that and here's my list of tasks and um, so um, so yeah cool well this, this is good and hopefully by this time next week as well I'll have finished the tune I was working on last week um, ah, seeing as you're so good I'll give you a quick blast of um let me find it yeah do you want to close the current project yes so i'll give you a blast of this this is the current tune i'm working on which started life as a remix for gomorozov uh who's an artist on my label and then i it just turned into something completely different and there's no elements of his song left in it whatsoever um and it's sort of a crazy um sort of going for a new school old school rave vibe um i haven't opened this project since last time so we'll just give you a blast oh hang on a minute we've got a weird 303 somewhere what are you doing there mr 303 Ah, yeah, I remember I said acid back in. This is still very much a work in progress.
just needed to work out what I was doing with the base there. warmer and have like the base sort of filled in. Cowbells are loud. It's quite bright, there isn't much going on in there. I like the whistle posse. And the switch up skills there. Wah, wah. I wanted to add something on the bass. Wah, wah. Leave you with a whistle posse. Whistle posse! Hey everybody inside the place tonight, thanks for tuning into the Twitch. My name's Sean B. I'll be back next week with more Inside the Ride. Sound technician, sound technician. <laughs> cool, yeah. I'll knock on the head for tonight. I've been uh, blathering on for a while. Um, so yeah, tomorrow night I'll be on uh, playing some video games, maybe from about 8 o'clock uh, UK time. Uh, Svat is asking, this is a track I'm working on now. Uh, I think I'm going to call it I Can't Wait or Ventil 8. Um, it was originally um, started life as a remix of a completely different sounding song by Gomorozov. Um, which I'm just going to start again um, and make that sound like how I meant it to sound. And this has just become a brand new track, really. Um, and yeah, I, this is almost done. I reckon a couple more studio sessions I can get that finished. But all of the tidying up of the, um, the mix hasn't been done. There's lots of gaps in the overall, like, spectrum. The bass, I still haven't, like written in uh, quite a bit of it um there's there's still a lot to do but like the guts of it there i think i, I like the vibe it's, it sounds good and um i want another little vocal in there to sort of be a bit more euphoric and have a bit more of a message but apart from that it's good anyway so thanks for tuning in everybody i'll leave you with the stream ending thing um and those of you who are watching on twitch i might send you to another channel uh, that's doing drum and bassy stuff or maybe i'll send you to an escape from tarkov channel so you can uh start to learn about the game um for when i play it tomorrow night <laughs> Uh, big up everyone, thanks for tuning in, love you lots uh, Thanks for all the subscriptions and follows that came in as well And the donations, that's much appreciated Very much appreciated Because uh, I'm just stuck in here Can't go do any gigs or anything um, I hope there's a vaccine soon um, Alright, peace out, I'll see ya <laughs>